Hello, I'm Melinda Green, and this is my 2x2x2x2. Two 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 two. It represents a 4D analog of a Rubik's Cube, but don't worry about that part just yet. First, I'll just show you how the puzzle works strictly as a 3D puzzle, and then I'll talk about what that means. So what is it? Well, it's constructed from cubes that are made from four different colors, all connected by magnets. The cubes are composed of these pyramidal pieces called stickers. They come in four pairs of opposite colors, orange, red, white, yellow, etc. If you choose one color from each pair, there are 16 possible ways that you can choose four colors and build 16 cubes. And that's what you see here. So what are the legal moves? There are two kinds of primitive moves, and then many fancy moves that can be built up from them. The first kind of primitive moves are called twists. These are 90 degree twists. And then there are 180 degree twists. The second kind of primitive move is called a rotation. And you do that just by rotating the two halves of the puzzle against each other like this. Compound moves can be constructed from primitive moves. For example, you can combine 90 degree twists with rotations to let you take the two halves of the puzzle apart and stick them together in any way you like. Another valid compound move is this crazy looking thing that I call a clamshell move. It's quite handy. And you can prove that it's valid by undoing it using simple 180 degree twists like this. So what's the solved state? Well, this is the solved state, which is defined as having all eight stickers of each color in one of three configurations, either all mutually touching each other, like the red stickers in the very center, or virtually touching each other, like the pairs of squares along the sides. They're all just one rotation away from being literally touching, or they occupy the outer corners of each of the two halves of the puzzle, like the white and yellow here. So you can see that rotations of the puzzle don't change its state. These are all still solved. So what does it look like to to, uh, to scramble it up? Well, let's just do that. You can see that very quickly it's quite a mess. And the next thing you're going to want to do is to learn how to uh, disassemble and reassemble the puzzle because that's how you'll be able to develop algorithms needed to solve it or to just simply reset it when you get stuck and want to start over. So how to do that? Well, what I like to do is just smash the whole thing apart and put together each half independently. So let's just do that. Now, you don't have to put the white and yellow stickers on the outside if you don't want to. You can use any uh, color pair that you like. So let's just, let's just say uh, blue and green. So what I would do is just find all the, all the blue pieces and separate them from the green pieces, and then assemble each half of the puzzle independently, and then just stick them all back together. So there's the blue and green pieces separated. 
The tricky thing is usually just getting started uh, by finding two pieces that go together correctly. Here we want blue on the outside and we're beginning to, to solve the rest of the cube. And now we just find any matching halves of the face and put them in the middle and then twist until the puzzle is solved. So there it is. That's all you really need to know about the puzzle, the puzzle in order to get started. The rest of this video is going to get confusing because I'm going to talk about the 4D nature of the puzzle. But if you just want to treat this as a strictly 3D puzzle, you can ignore all of the following except that for completeness, there's still one more important sequence you're gonna to need to know, which I'll talk about in a bit. So what does it mean? Well, this really is a true 4D analog of the two by two by two by, the two by two by two Rubik's cube, but it's squished a little bit to make it physically practical. For instance, the fact that the pieces are cubes is not a reflection of the cubicle nature of the 4D cubies, but rather done out of physical convenience. The virtual version of this puzzle is called Magic Cube 4D, and it uses a more correct and symmetrical projection into three dimensions. But this puzzle preserves its topology, meaning that it's the same underlying puzzle. The important fact is that for every twist of one puzzle, there is a corresponding twist in the other puzzle though in this case, some of the twists are more difficult to get to depending on the puzzle orientation. Now to see this, realize that there are really four puzzle axes involved here, but two of them always project onto the same spatial dimension. So right now, the white yellow axis is going this way, the orange red axis is going vertically, and the pink purple axis is going through the middle, but so is the green blue axis. So, so out of the four axes, green and green blue is coincident with purple pink. Now we can change that very quickly uh, with just a simple, a simple rotation. So now green blue is coincident with orange, red, or white, yellow. But we always have green and blue on the outside, no matter what we do. So you can see that we can't really fully scramble this puzzle because we can't get any colors besides green and blue into those outer positions. We can exchange green and blue among themselves, but we have no way at the moment to, to exchange them with any other colors. So if you go back on the video and, and look at the, the scrambled position before, we had only white and yellow pieces on the outside, so it wasn't fully scrambled. It's really the equivalent of a bandaged 4D Rubik's Cube. So it really is a 4D puzzle, it's just not exercising the full state space of the full 4D version of this puzzle. So what we really need are what we really need is a way to put any other pair of colors or any other access to be the the outer two faces. And if we can do that, then we can certainly get at the full, get at all the twists of all the colors. So right now I can, I can easily twist the blue and green faces into any position I like, but for other colors, like say this pink face, I can do a 180 degree twist like this, but I can't do any arbitrary twist on it. So, so let's just, so, so what we need is a way to put, let's say, the, uh, the orange-purple face on, on the outside where the green and blue is. 
I can't do that with legal moves that I've shown you, but I can, I can do it. Uh, so the important thing to notice is that it doesn't really matter how I make that transformation as long as I don't change the state of the puzzle, it's perfectly legal. So here's how I would do it. So I'm not going to show that in great detail. I'll, I'll put links to a video that describes what I, what I just did more carefully. But the important thing is you can see now that purple and pink are now the, the outer faces and the puzzle is still solved. And to show that I can now fully scramble it, I'll just do a simple 90 degree twist in this configuration and then and then put some some other uh, rotate some other axis on the outside. Let's go back to to green and blue and then you'll see the result. So now green and blue are still on the outside, but now we have white and yellow also. So you can see that we're starting to to mix the outside faces with the rest of the 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 faces and we can we can now fully scramble the puzzle. In fact, it almost looks scrambled at this point and you, and it's it's good to recognize that we're really still topologically just one simple 90 degree twist away from being solved. I can't do that with a simple twist right now, but I can go back to the, the purple pink faces on the outside and then you'll see that it's only one twist away from being solved. And here it is. So, what do you think? Are you convinced that this is the, the true 4D analog of the 2x2x2 Rubik's Cube? Uh, well, you should be skeptical. This is quite a bold claim, but it turns out to be true. So, feel free to leave questions in the comments section. And if there's enough interest, maybe I'll do a follow-up video. There are certainly a lot more interesting things to talk about. And I'll also add links to, uh, um, to uh, information on how you can get one for yourself. And, um, and there you have it. As far as I'm aware, this is the, the world's first physical 4D twisty puzzle. My friend Don Hatch and I wrote Magic Cube 4D almost 30 years ago, and a nice little community of higher dimensional uh, twisty puzzle enthusiasts has grown out around it. And we all dreamed about such a physical puzzle for a long time. And although it seemed like too much to ask for, we could never quite rule it out. But it turns out that it really is possible at least for the two to the four. I still don't know how to build a physical three to the four, but I'm just thrilled to have finally a physical version of a 4D twisty puzzle. Thank you very much.